This video is about important common causes of neurological gait disorders. Number 1 myopathic or waddling gait. It is due to bilateral weakness or dysfunction in the muscles around the hips and the upper thighs. It is often due to a primary muscle disorder that is proximal myopathy. Conditions associated with myopathic gait include muscular dystrophies such as Duchenne and Becker muscular dystrophy, spinal muscular atrophy, congenital hip dysplasia which is a condition where the hip joint is not formed properly at birth, then inflammatory myopathies such as polymyositis or dermatomyositis and metabolic myopathies can all cause myopathic or waddling gait. Now how it manifests? There is swaying, that is the individual may swa from side to side to compensate for the instability. Another sign is hip dropping, that is the hip on the side of the swinging leg drops with each step and this is called trenton Lenberg sign. Then difficulty standing up, individuals may have difficulty standing up from a sitting position. Another important sign is lumbar lordosis. The lower back may arch excessively. Next is high stepping gait or steppage. This is a consequence of foot drop which may be unilateral or bilateral and this is due to common peroneal nerve lesion. Motor polyneuropathy for example charcot mary tooth disease and distal myopathy. Now, in this type of gait, the leg has to be lifted abnormally high to make a step. With mild ankle dorsiflexion weakness, the foot slaps onto the ground as the weight is transferred onto the heel. So, this produces high stepping gait. Third type is ataxic gait and it is most commonly seen in cerebellar disease. It is described as clumsy, staggering and wide-based unsteady gait with irregular sized paces. Now in midline cerebellar lesion that is the cerebellar vermis, there is potential to topple in any direction and there may be little or no limb in coordination. While in cerebellar hemisphere lesion, the patient veers toward the side of the lesion and there is ipsilateral limb in coordination. Now in ataxic gait, while standing still, the patient's body may swagger back and forth and from side to side. This is known as titubation. Patient will not be able to walk from heel to toe or in a straight line. And the gait of acute alcohol intoxication usually resemble the gait of cerebellar ataxic gait. Fourth type is hemiparetic or hemiplegic gait. This arises from unilateral that is one-sided lesion of the corticospinal tract which is most commonly due to stroke. The spastic leg is stiff and held in extended position with impaired knee flexion and ankle dorsiflexion. Now when taking a step the leg swings outward in a circular motion to bring the plantar flexed foot round and forward and this is called circumduction. The toe may scrape the ground as the leg swings forward. The affected leg may take shorter steps compared to the unaffected leg. The gait pattern is asymmetrical with the affected leg exhibiting these characteristic features. Now in hemiparetic gait, the pelvis may tilt upward on the affected side to facilitate circumduction. In addition, the spastic arm is held adducted at the shoulder with the elbow flexed and the forearm in front of the chest with flexion at the wrist and the fingers and swinging of the affected arm is also reduced. Now the fifth type is spastic gait or paraparesis or tetraparesis. It is often associated with upper motor neuron lesion and this can be result from conditions affecting the brain or the spinal cord such as strokes, demyelinating disease like multiple sclerosis. Other causes of spastic gait are spinal disorders or cerebral palsy. Now in this type of gait there are bilateral spastic leg and bilateral circumduction such that the leading leg may end up adducted in front of the trailing leg hence a seizure gait is produced. Now spasticity in the calf muscles can lead to toe walking where the heel is lifted off the ground throughout the gait cycle. Now people with spastic gait may show uneven wear on the outside edges of their shoes and this is due to the way they walk. Number 6 Parkinsonian gait that is in Parkinson's disease. Now the features are kyphotic posture, 
Start hesitation. Initially small paces which may get bigger. Acceleration of rate of steps once walking is initiated. This is festin and gait. Then there is reduced or absent arm swing unilaterally or bilaterally. They may suddenly get stuck for example in a doorway. Then there is increased number of paces to turn around. However, there is improvement of the gait with visual cues on the ground. And the last type is frontal gait disorder or gait apraxia. The features include gait ignition failure, start hesitation, small paces but no acceleration, unsteadiness, improvement of gait with visual cues on the ground. Now there is prominent swinging of the arms. There is ability to use the legs to make cyclic movements on a bed or in a chair, yet inability to use the legs to walk. I hope you liked the video. Thank you and please subscribe.